<sighs> Hi everyone, it's Christmas again. In just a week. <laughs> wow, just a week till Christmas. I can't believe So I felt like I should probably post an update for anyone who's been wondering where I've been for the last couple months. And uh, I'd apologize for the state of my room, but the fact of the matter is I haven't been doing all that well. Uh, in short, I took on a massive ill-advised project. Then I had several disasters occur one after another, and then I had an organ removed. So it's been fun. I don't know if you noticed, but there were a few problems with my last video about the uh, Olivetti typewriter. I mean, nothing too egregious, uh, for the most part. I mean, mostly I was just sort of out of it the whole time. Don't know if that came across, but uh, then there's the absolutely colossal factual error that almost ruins the video and which I can't begin to explain. Specifically, I said it was super weird that the Olivetti could only do MDA graphics. And yeah, that would be really weird if it were true. <laughs> After I released the video, I just got to thinking like, no, that can't be true. So I went back to the studio and I tested it and no, it's not true. The Olivetti has perfectly good CGA support. I went back and threw a whole bunch of software at it and everything passed with flying colors, including Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is sort of the acid test for PC compatibility in this era. So yeah, that would have made the video a lot more interesting. Um, instead, my video, which is one of the only sources of information on these things at all uh, on the English speaking internet is a source of extreme misinformation. And there's not much I can do about it. I could delete the video, but uh, well, you know the drill, that's not an option. Uh, so instead I just put a pinned comment under it that explains what I got wrong, which nobody will ever read. So pretty disappointing and embarrassing, but to be fair, I was under tremendous amounts of stress. Okay, so it starts like this. Uh, in the middle of October, my sewer explodes. And I'd had problems with it for years, but like this time around, it just no shit quit. I had no sewer. No shit, no shit quit. I get it. I've said that like 30 times while shooting this video. I just now realized that's a joke about sewers. The whole sewer line had to be replaced end to end, and because I'm an American, uh, I had to do this myself. Now, when I posted about this on Patreon, I got a number of comments from very confused European people going like, that can't be how it works, right? You're right to be confused. It's wild that it works like this. But if you're an American homeowner, you own your plumbing all the way out to the city main, which is usually under a road. So if your entire sewer or your entire freshwater line fails and you have to dig up the road to fix part of it, you pay for it. Now, you might be wondering, how can that be possible? Who could survive a financial nightmare like that? And the answer is, not very many people, we just live in hell over here. But anyway, it wasn't actually that bad for me. The pipe was only compromised up to the edge of the property. Uh, it was fine after that, but for long and complicated reasons that I don't wanna get into, I still had to pay to have the city sidewalk removed and replaced. So in all, this ran me about $30,000. Uh, and no, homeowner's insurance will not cover it. They call it normal wear and tear, which makes you wonder just what the hell that stuff is good for. So uh, I ran a GoFundMe and I took out a loan. And if either one of those had failed, I wouldn't have flushing toilets right now or, or probably ever again. So you can imagine how this made me feel. But on top of that, I was in pain all the time and I didn't know why. It started in the middle of the plumbing project. Uh, it was just an ache in my abdomen that moved around but never really went away. It's pretty mild at first, so I managed to get through the Olivetti video, but over the course of November, it just got worse and worse until I was waking up every day hurting and I couldn't really think about anything. And I'd been to a doctor and they didn't seem too impressed, so I was just sort of waiting for the next shoe to drop, I guess, when I woke up one morning to find my basement flooding. My house tries to flood itself every winter, and I'd set up a bunch of pumps and sensors to keep this under control, but I'd accidentally unplugged them one day, and I didn't notice until the water had been coming in for over an hour. Whoops. So I had to rip up the carpet in my home office and throw out a bunch of stuff, and it certainly could have been worse, but it was just one more thing on the pile that I had to cope with, and it also rendered my home office uninhabitable for several weeks. So I'm sitting around at home with nothing to do. I'm in pain, I can't think, I'm unable to go to my studio to do research or to work in my home office. And I can't even remember what project I was working on. I mean, there was there was supposed to be something after the Olivetti, but it's gone. I have no idea what I was gonna do next. So what do I decide to do to fill time? I begin a task that I've been putting off for five years because it was too big. And that was documenting the new tech Amiga video toaster. 
and I'm a real genius. I can't begin to explain the scope of this project, uh, but I'll just tell you that in its current state, the script is nearly 50,000 words. Uh, so basically I completed the NaNoWriMo challenge for 2023, go me. But you can imagine what a nightmare this would be to shoot, right? And of course, being an American, uh, pain doesn't keep you from going to work. So I go back to the studio and I start shooting this thing. And I spend so long there that I just start filling up SSDs with raw footage. I filled up four two terabyte Samsung SSDs and then I went to Best Buy and I bought two more two terabyte Samsung SSDs and I filled all of those up. I have 12 terabytes of footage here from this video and I brought it all home and I edited it and I rendered out the rough cut and I sent it to a few people privately and the response was mixed. And I'd already had second thoughts about a lot of the decisions I'd made. So I just decided to shit can everything, rewrite about 75% of the script and do it all again from scratch. And this is not unusual for the kind of videos that I make. I frequently go, you know what? This just went in the wrong direction and I shit can it and I start over, but that's for a video that's like 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. This was three and a half hours. So I was not really sure if I'd made the right decision. And in the middle of all this, the, the, the house, falling apart and not knowing if I'm ruining a video that's taken weeks out of my life already, on Thanksgiving Eve, the pain in my gut finally decides to migrate down and to the right. And you might know what that means. So yeah, I spent Thanksgiving having my appendix taken out. Now I'm told that it's very possible that all the way back in October when this all started, I was actually having appendicitis then. I didn't know this. You can get it and then it can just go away and then maybe come back, maybe not. Well, apparently mine came and went and then came back and stayed. So it's a good thing I got it taken out when I did. I didn't have a chance to rupture and I'm doing pretty well now, but while the wonders of modern medicine are quite impressive, it turns out that even a quick, clean, totally ideal laparoscopic procedure can still leave you laid up for over a month. I could barely move for the first week, actually, it hurt so much, and I was in pain for another week or so, and I'm doing a lot better now. I almost feel back to normal, but I've been told that I can't safely exert myself until sometime in the middle of January, or I could bust some stitches. So, yeah. It's been a journey, and what this all boils down to is I've been running at half capacity for months. That's why I haven't put anything out. I'm now on official hiatus, and I'm going to stay there until I'm back at 100%. My patrons have sternly and strenuously insisted that I not lift a finger until I'm fully healed, and I'm inclined to agree with their judgment. And fortunately, the weirdness of the job that I've built for myself here, where people basically pay me regardless of exactly what and how often I produce, makes this possible but only to an extent. I hate to admit this, but I've actually become dependent on my AdSense revenue. I didn't want it to happen. I detested it has, but I can't deny that after I quit my day job, uh, the extra couple grand from YouTube ads became a necessary part of my budget. Now, most months I haven't had any trouble with this. I put out a video or two, it keeps the number where it should be, no problem. But obviously after two months of putting out literally nothing, the number is dipping considerably. And that's particularly problematic when I now have a new and substantial loan to pay off. So I've been trying to think about stuff I could produce here at the house that wouldn't be too strenuous, you know, here at my desk. Uh, I might actually be putting out another essay on video game stuff uh, relatively soon that will hopefully be less weird than the last one I did. Maybe that'll get some views, but I guess I'll just say this. If you haven't signed up for my Patreon, but you've been thinking about it, now would be a great time to pull that trigger. I mean, you can think of it as a Christmas present if you like, or just life support until I get fully back on my feet. Either way, I'm not gonna harp on that subject. Uh, you'll either do it or you won't. I understand if not, I just wanted to let you know where I'm at and how I'm doing. But with all that out of the way, it's the end of the year, and I always feel like doing some kind of year in review wrap up speech, you know, talking about like what my experiences over the last 12 months have taught me about the meaning of Christmas or whatever, but uh, I couldn't really think of anything. And then it occurred to me that there's something that's been bugging me about my channel and, and where it's gone and, and how I've gotten here. And it's been bugging me for quite a while. It's not necessarily a problem per se, but Things have changed since I started this in ways I didn't expect, and I've been wanting to talk about it, but I haven't been able to figure out where or when, and you know what, how about here and now? So the other day, I was looking up a really old video of mine for some reason, and I was shocked to realize that I've been making YouTube videos for over six years. I mean, genuinely, I would have thought three, four at most, um, but yeah, <laughs> 2017, right? 
And what's really shocking to me is that over that time period, my subject matter has changed tremendously. I mean, I started out trying to cover like uh, old video games and, and PC productivity software, electronics repair, you know, audio equipment, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, I actually bought a crate of audio cassettes on eBay like uh, four years ago because I had this idea that I was going to do all these videos where I'd like uh, test tape recorders and like play all these uh, found tapes and, and talk about what was on them and whatnot. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, even then, it doesn't seem like something I would have actually done. I never did manage to get myself to even begin pulling those out. And I only actually got around to throwing away the cassettes like six months ago. So yeah, it's taken me a long time to figure out what the hell I actually do here. And all that stuff has kind of gotten you know left in the dust, unsurprisingly. I think we can see where my passions lie nowadays. But what's really interesting is that one of those passions no longer really seems to be video equipment. And I think a lot of you will understand why that seems strange to me. I mean, I themed my channel around this. Like, have you looked at my avatar, <laughs> for Christ's sake? Like, obviously, I had the idea that I was going to be a channel that was largely about video gear. And that idea has persisted up to at least, you know, a couple years ago. But it's, it's really started to lose its sheen for me. And I only really realized fairly recently that that was going on. For a while, it did seem like a primary focus. I mean, I had a number of banger videos about it. Um, the two videos that put me on the map, as it were, the only reason I really have an audience, were about how the NES generates TV signals and how a very unusual type of CRT worked. So when I decided to rename my channel from its initial throwaway name to Cathode Ray Dude, that seemed to make a lot of sense. And it still does. I'm not planning on changing the name. I like the name. But it does feel a bit weird to identify that way, given that I, frankly, mostly just talk about computers these days. And it took me quite a bit to realize that this was happening. Over the first few years that I was making money off my channel, I was putting it all back into the channel, but it was all going towards video equipment of different types. So I got all these camcorders and video mixers and effects units. I mean, I've shown you some of it. The, the, the camcorder shelf has shown up in several videos, and it's a little embarrassing for reasons I'll reveal shortly. Uh, but I've got all that stuff in the studio still and really no desire to make videos about most of it, you know? And it's weird how this happened. I mean, I know that at one point I felt incredibly fired up about this and I had uh, this idea that I would just, you know, take every single item that I obtained and write a script about you know, what its feature set was and then what it did versus other things and whatnot. And now it's all just gone. Like it just poofed, you know? And I think it's because it clicked with me at some point that, you know, camcorders all do the same thing. They produce a picture. As long as they aren't broken, the picture is pretty much going to look the same from one to the other. I mean, the whole point of a camcorder is to not be noticed, right? It's supposed to reproduce reality. And if they're functioning, that's what they do. And if they're not, well, I don't know how to fix them. So it's not to say these things aren't neat, but I realized at some point that I just had very little to say about them. And at some later point, it clicked with me that what I like is not talking about neat things, it's telling stories. And I don't think I'm as good at it as some people, like the people who maybe want to be a YouTuber to begin with. I wish I was better, but it's still the only thing that really gets me fired up. And it means that all the stuff that I cover has to have some kind of narrative behind it, or I just can't do it. And it was always like this. I mean, I spent my first few years on here trying to make videos about stuff that was just neat. And it, it just broke me. You know, writing scripts was agonizing because I was trying to figure out how to suck some kind of drama out of just describing an object and its capabilities. And it just didn't work. Nowadays, the writing comes a lot easier because everything that I choose to cover fires my imagination in some way. So you've got the Olivetti typewriter and the Creative Infra CD, and of course, all the quick start machines, you know, they're slam dunks because they have one thing in common. It's really hard for me to imagine how any of them made it to production. The devices themselves do fascinate me to be sure, like what they can do and, and how they're designed is, is cool. But what's far more exciting to me than here's a weird thing is asking, how did this weird thing get made? It's the human element that gets me, right? Thinking about what the meetings were like that produced a lot of the stuff that I cover on here. It's like 95% of where my head is when I'm working on the scripts for these things. So in the last five years, out of my whole collection, the only camcorders that ever managed to make it into a video were the disc-based ones and the one with the weird little pop-out control module. I didn't even realize it then, but the reason those interested me wasn't because they were weird cameras. 
but because I felt that the way they were conceived must have been weird. I mean, think about it, right? At some point, someone had to say, well, uh, what if we made a camcorder that recorded onto DVD? And then everybody else in the room went, shut up, Bob, that'll never work. But somehow, you know, they ended up bringing that to market. And there must have been so much doubt. I, I have doubt. I mean, if you watch the video, there's lots of things to doubt about disc-based camcorders. It wasn't a good idea. It didn't work very well. And they went away as soon as they could, right? So yeah, there was a technology that just didn't want to be born, and yet it was. Well, conversely, I eventually realized that my collection of broadcast cameras was very cool, but the thing that I like about that kind of product is that it's very well made, it's very pragmatic, and there's no story in that, right? Like, what? A guy who earned his engineering degree, went to work, didn't get stuck with a half-ass budget, didn't get paired with incompetent coworkers, didn't get saddled with self-defeating directives from dumbass executives, and produced a product that works and that customers actually want. <laughs> That's great, man. Good work. Bye. There's, there's nothing to say about it. And I just don't know how to gush over something for 20 minutes, no matter how much I like it. I mean, I've, I've managed it a couple times, like uh, with my video on the DSR-50 tape recorder and the PVM-1390, but I think both of those were kind of weird and they were both kind of a struggle for me. You know, like I think I only pulled it off because with the DSR-50, I was at least showing you something you'd probably never seen before, right? But that's it. Like any other tape deck uh, that I put up there, it's just gonna be more of the same thing. And I just don't know how to do that. This might sound strange, but I just don't know how to compliment something. You know, like if it's good, I'm just gonna go, oh, that's good. And uh, you know, I'll give it a nod, but that's it. And I just don't have it in me to make any further observations. So the end result of this realization is I threw away my camcorder collection. I mean, not all of it, but well over half of it. I just piled it up on a cart and I took it to RePC and I dumped it on the shelves and, and put $10 stickers on everything because I wanted them to go to people who would actually appreciate them and use them. And uh, I wasn't doing that. Like I realized that I hadn't turned on any of them in two years. And in fact, that I had had some for six or eight months and never turned them on at all. And I couldn't really think of a scenario where I would ever turn any of them on. I couldn't think of anything that any one of them could do that uh, I couldn't do with something else. So what I kept was just the stuff that had some kind of story behind it, like something worth bringing up in conversation. Case in point, uh, this funky looking thing, right? That's the camera that you see at the beginning of Ghostbusters. Egon, your mucus. That's one fact about it, but it's not actually why I have it. I just found it on uh, shopgoodwill.org and I bought it because I thought it looked incredibly dorky. Like, <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's just got the mic just, just sticking straight out in front. Uh, the viewfinder is like sticking off the side on this like ball joint, right? It's got this big heavy die cast metal bail uh, for a carrying handle. I mean, this thing is absurd and it weighs a ton too. Um, I don't know that I really have anything else to say about it, but at least I know why I bought it. And this is really why most of my old subject matter just went by the wayside, right? Like, what is it to say about old games? Uh, mostly, if they're bad, uh, we know the reasons that they're bad. And if they're good, well, you know, uh, what do I have to say about that either? It's good. You should play it. Um, and then I, I had this idea at the outside of the channel that I thought was super novel. I wanted to review like lost PC productivity software. That sounded so fascinating to me. It still is. I wish someone would do it, right? Um, just looking at these old programs, like purpose built things for like doing your taxes specifically in Nebraska in 1991, um, just fascinate me. It's just, I don't know why, I don't know that I can really explain what it is that attracts me to them, but something about that sort of wild west era of like three people in an office somewhere put together a program in like Pascal, um, and then sold it to like 300 people total as as floppy disks that they mailed out, you know, from the backs of local catalogs and whatnot. Um, and in a lot of cases, the software is like very good. You know, it's better than the stuff that you use nowadays, but it's because it's built down to this very specific application, right? Fascinates me. In fact, here we go. I've got a program just like that here. This is called Chef Tech. This is a food service management software. And I'll bet like 30 people watching this are just pointing at the screen, <laughs> just like, oh, oh, that, that thing, I get that reference. So apparently what this does is 
you install this on your computer at your restaurant and you plug into it all your recipes. Like you tell it, um, okay, we make Caesar salads and each one requires, you know, a third of a romaine head and, uh, you know, this much crouton and this much dressing and this much cheese. And we sell about 30 of these every day, except on Saturdays where we sell about 40 of them. And then the software calculates how much of each ingredient you're gonna need, plus all the other meals that use it. And it spits out a report saying how much of each of those things you should buy every month so you don't run out. And I was gonna joke that you'd then just send all that off to Cisco directly, because uh, you know if, if you work in food service, you, you get the joke. There were like 95% of restaurants get all their ingredients. But then I remembered that on the back here, it actually says in this little feature grid here that if you have the plus or ultra edition, it will actually place an order directly with Cisco or US Foods. <laughs> okay, so look, you can tell that this titillates me, right? But for some reason, I just can't figure out how to produce a video out of this. You know, you just saw just about everything that I can deliver because if I tried to make a video about it, it would start with me saying that and that would be fun and then I would install it and like the fun would end. It would just be like 40 minutes of me clicking through like, okay, here's where we put in lettuce. Here's where we build a recipe. You know, here's where we do this. Here's where we do that. And like other people uh, seem to be able to pull off YouTube videos like that, but I just can't. And I've just slowly had to accept it. I had hoped when I started my channel that just exploring stuff like this would be interesting enough to carry me. And it's it sort of maybe could be, but what I later discovered is the thrill of either stumbling on a fascinating story or stumbling on a product that's so weird that you have to imagine a fascinating story just to try to explain what the hell you found and how it could exist. <laughs> And I become addicted to that feeling, frankly. You know, it's just so much better than what I used to do. And, and there's enough stuff out there that, that just does it for me that I just don't feel any desire to go back to the old subject matter. And that bums me out a little, if I'm honest. That stuff was neat in its own right, but I don't know. You, you gotta go where your passions take you, I suppose. I do, anyway. So what does this mean? Well, it's not to say that there won't ever be any more videos about video gear, nothing like that. I mean, I had a pretty good time making that video about uh, how video mixers work uh, a few months ago, and people seem to like that. So it seems like it's still a sometimes food for me. Uh, there's also obviously things like the video toaster. I mean, that's a topic made entirely of stories. And even after I finished the initial 50,000 word video, which is probably gonna be like three and a half to four hours, I have a whole mini series of additional videos about new tech stuff coming after that. Because uh, the video toaster and all the other stuff that new tech made uh, is just janky as hell, you know? like. We live in an era where computers have become so, you know, reliable and, and gadgets are just a thing of the past, right? Everything you buy is finished. You know, nothing, nothing is, is quirky in that broken, doesn't actually work kind of way that it used to be in, in the earlier eras of technology. Not because it couldn't be, but because nobody's willing to sell something that has any unpolished features. And man, people used to be willing to sell you broken crap, and it was so exciting. New Tech was one of those companies. The video toaster is a mess, and it's amazing that it got made at all. And it's amazing that New Tech went on to make more products that were just as weird as that, but in completely different ways. And they still make products, even in this era of everything being sanded over and smooth and featureless, they still make products that are weird and broken. And I love that. And I, I can't wait to talk about all these things. And of course, anything that, that dovetails into early computing is automatically a win, right? So for instance, I have other video processing devices, uh, such as the, uh, what's it called? The Pinnacle Real-Time. Uh, and I think, uh, I think I have a DV Storm RT. Real-time video effects processors for the PC and the Mac before the era of people doing that with like GPUs, right? So we're talking like early 90s, real-time video effects processing. Oh man, this stuff was unbelievably rough around the edges, okay? I've got several like massive double wide PC cases that are stuffed with ISA and PCI cards that people were using for video editing back in like 1996 that I can't wait to show you. They're so goddamn fragile. It's amazing they ever worked at all. Can you see how excited I am, okay? And uh, then there's stuff like uh, the Sony Anycast. I think, 
I've shown glimpses of this in like three different videos. It's this thing here. It's a weirdly ahead of its time video mixer uh, that's built into a shockingly underpowered PC in the strangest form factor. It's like a luggable laptop kind of thing. There's nothing else like it. And true to form, it doesn't work very well. Mm perfect. I live for this shit. And I can't wait to speculate wildly about how the hell they came up with this thing and, and who thought it was a good idea. Can, can you tell that this is the stuff that gets me excited? You know, like computers are um, my domain. Uh, they always have been. And uh, for the longest time, I think that I wanted to cover stuff that wasn't computers on my channel because I thought that I had already seen everything in the history of, of the PC uh, that was interesting or quirky. And then in the last few years, I've just uncovered so much dirt, so much broken shit that I didn't even know existed uh, that I think um, I think I'm happy here. And um, yeah. There's, there's going to be stuff from those genres that I used to try to cover, but I can definitely see that I moved in a different direction than I was prepared for six years ago or even four years ago. And, and I think I like where I went. I hope you do too. But the point is that I am still trying to figure out what exactly it is that I do here, you know? And that's why I think I've had a couple videos that were misfires, like, um, the one about the origin of the optical mouse, that was weird. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you didn't like it. It's understandable. I don't think I like it very much. It was an experiment. It was an idea that just popped into my head. I thought, oh, what if I did it this way? I've never done anything like that before. What if I did it this way? And I don't think it worked. And someday I think I'm going to redo that video a different way so more people can enjoy it. But when you don't really know what your thing is, then how do you know what to say yes or no to, right? Like the usual wisdom is say yes to everything. So I try that, but I don't know if anything's a good idea until I'm done. I'm getting better at knowing what to say no to, though. At least there's that. I mean, I'm wasting less time trying to cover things that bore me to tears just because I tell myself that they're neat. But it also means there's a certain amount of chasing the dragon, right? I'm walking around just picking things up and going like, oh, does this excite me? Uh, does this excite me? Does this excite me? And the result can sometimes be, you know, a 50,000 word script that's nearly impossible to actually produce. You know, like I hit on an idea that's too exciting. Whoops, lesson learned. So if you've noticed any inconsistencies in my work, <laughs> I can't even decide what a studio should look like. Um, now you know why I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. I don't know what the hell I'm doing over here. And I guess the silver lining is that I can assure you that everything I do is as sincere and authentic as it gets because all of my attempts to make anything that isn't true to my heart's desires have failed dismally. And that frustrates me to no end. You know, I, I really wish that I could just reach over and pick up something I have that nobody's seen before like this <laughs> and sit down and, and just point a camera at it and talk for 15 minutes and, and bam, have a video like so many people seem to be able to do, but my brain just will not let me write a word of narration unless I'm so amped up that before I can stop myself, I'm, I've put down half an hour of explanation for a single button. You know, I have to work as hard as I can to keep myself from just going on and on and on forever. <laughs> Shit, it's happening again, ain't it? Okay, okay, to wrap up. This has not been the easiest job for me, um, whatever appearances may suggest, and 2023 was not the easiest year for me either. So I just want to thank you all for sticking with me. I obviously don't know what the hell I'm doing over here. I'm, I'm just sort of trying to feel it out, and I feel like I have one of the most inconsistent bodies of work on the whole website. And you all could be a lot more critical of it if you wanted, but you've been merciful, and that's deeply appreciated. So hopefully someday I figure out what the hell it is that I'm actually trying to do and get it down to a science. But in the meantime, I hope that you all have a nice Christmas if you observe. And I hope to see you pretty early in the new year. If all goes according to plan, I should be back with something new to watch, you know, mid January. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. In the meantime, take care of yourselves.